All right. Hey, so for those of you that are live on YouTube, uh, we will go ahead and get started right on time at 7 p.m. So just hang tight here. Just forgive us for the silence. We're going to start letting people into the Zoom room here in about a minute. Uh, but we will be getting started at 7 p.m. So just hang tight. Cool. Welcome, students that are coming in right now. Super excited to have you here. We'll be getting started at 7 p.m. For those of you that are just joining us right now, uh, just go ahead and start off with the first step is make your way down to the chat button there. Click on the chat button and adjust to, to all panelists and attendees. Once you find your way there, uh, just let us know where you're from here in the chat. And I'm going to go ahead and post here real quick. But please uh, adjust to all panelists and attendees. We have a all-star cast here tonight here to talk to you. So we're really excited, but we'll be getting started here in about five minutes. So just let us know where you're from in the chat, please. All right, let's see here. All right, cool. Paula from Rio, Brazil. Thanks for being here. It's cool. I love these events. We have people like all over the world at the same time. So that's that's always exciting. Hey, Regina from Charlotte. All right. Dallas, Texas. Thanks for being here. Let's see. Where's everybody from? All right. Santa Catarina, Brazil. Wow. OK. Two from Brazil tonight. Nice. Sacramento, hey, all right. LA or Louisiana, Tiffany? Mm -hmm. All right, cool, that's where I was born. Same, same, cool. Thank you all for hanging back. So for some of you that are out there, Salt Lake City, hey, thanks for being here. So uh, for those of you that are hanging back right now on YouTube, just know we're gonna get started in four minutes. Uh, this is usually the downtime before we get started. So let me bore you to death with a couple of things. My name is Hector Verdugo. I'm the Senior Vice President of Admissions here at Academy of Art University. We, uh, we're we going to have a wonderful workshop for you here tonight. I just want to go ahead and drop a couple links in here before we even get started. Uh, I'll be dropping links all night long tonight. You'll I'll be in the chat to answer questions and do some uh, some chit chat with you guys and help out. But for anybody that's looking at the university, uh, definitely want to make sure that I extend my information out to you. So anybody that's looking at potentially joining the academy, uh, first thing you want to do is just send me a quick email. Uh, if you have the time now, just shoot me an email if you want. But procedurally, what we like to do is sit down, schedule one-on-one -on -one appointments to talk to you about your interests, what you're passionate about, um, you know, what's going on with your situation about starting school or what we can, what we can do to help you. So uh, if any of you want to shoot me an email to set up a time to talk to explore the university, uh, please feel free to do that. We're more than happy to help you. We have a wonderful admissions team here for graduate school, undergraduate school, international admissions, you name it. So thank you all for joining us, though, for those of you that's piling in. I know that usually we get a, a big rush here at 7. Uh, so I see Baton Rouge is here. Thank you for being here, Melissa. Uh, Regina, so go to all panelists and attendees when you're adjusting. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that email in the chat there for you guys but just make sure you're adjusting to all panelists and attendees, everyone. This makes the thread so much easier to follow, answer questions, et cetera. So we'll be getting started here in just two more minutes, everybody. All right, hey, Las Vegas, nice, fun place. All right, two more minutes, guys. You don't have to deal with me much longer, I promise. So hang in there, okay? We have much more impressive people coming up. Really excited to have this event tonight here. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I got a sneak preview of some of the things we're gonna be doing here for the Fashion Business Workshop. Just uh, hang in there. Hello there from India. Thanks for being here. How cool. So anybody else here internationally? I see some folks from Brazil here, India. Let's see here, Venezuela, all right, cool. 
All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started here in like one more minute. So looks like our attendees are starting to continue to go up here. Hello there from Chicago. Once again, India, thanks for being here. How cool. Stephanie from the United States of America. Nice. Thanks for being here. Tampa. Cool. Miami. All right, Lauren. Hey. All right, everybody. So we're going to go ahead and get started here in just like one more second. So let me just go ahead and lay out some ground rules for everybody, just so you know. Uh, my name is Hector Verdugo. I'm the Senior Vice President of Admissions here at Academy of Art University, San Francisco, USA. Uh, so tonight, what we're doing is we're putting on a fun workshop here. We have a, a group of experts here in the room. They're all here to help you to talk to you more about the fashion industry, particularly fashion business workshop. Uh, but our goal here tonight is to try to have a good time. We want to make sure that we can show you what's going on in the industry, talk a little bit about the program, share with you important information about the school. The best thing that we can do for you, though, is interact with you. So we want to make sure that we're going to go over really cool things. We're going to have some demos for you as well. There will be a Q&A, but in the chat, I'm going to do my best to keep up with your questions. Generally, I can, I can tell you from my experience, a lot of these questions get answered along the way, but please feel free to interact. We'd love to hear from you. A couple things I'm going to drop in the portal or in the chat right now is a couple of links for you guys to save. No need to use these right now, but right here is a link to upcoming events. We're always doing events every Tuesday night. We have different events on Thursdays. They're always free workshops. Check out that list. Uh, right now, the website's being updated, but in like by the time we're done with this, that link right there will take you to the right spot. I'm also going to drop a couple of other things as well. Uh, for those of you uh, that want to check out really cool examples of student work, this is the link to our spring show. I would encourage you, if you're looking at the School of Fashion, go through those tabs and folders and check out some of the best of the best student work here from this year. It's a, a really amazing site, and I think it gives you a better understanding of what we do. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop my name an email address one more time. Uh, the reason being is that if anybody here is interested in looking at the university later on after this, what I'd love for you to do is just send me an email to say, hey, I really wanna set up a time to talk. I'll get back to you myself and we'll coordinate a time to talk and I'll try to see what I can do to try to help you learn more about the academy, financial aid, scholarship websites, you name it. I'm all about trying to help everybody. So without further ado, that's enough for me. So we have uh, a few stars here tonight. We're gonna have, you're gonna hear from uh, Angelica here. You're going to be hearing from Alyssa, and you're also beginning, you're going to be hearing uh, from the Fashion Product Development Program Coordinator, uh, Andrea Skillings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and introduce the star of the show. She is the director of the School of Fashion Merchandising. I've actually been uh, super lucky. I've actually known Gina for like longer than I've known my son, you know, like it's been like 12 or 13 years now. So I've been so lucky to work with Gina since I was like a day one employee in the industry. And uh, she's an amazing lady. So a little bit about Gina. Uh, she earned her MBA in marketing at Golden Gate University in San Francisco, as well as a Bachelor of Science in Clothing and Textiles and a BA in Philosophy from Iwas Women's University in Seoul, Korea. She has extensive experience in international fashion and luxury brands. With Escada Asia, she developed business and marketing strategies, managed merchandising for, and buying for multiple brands, pioneered and initiated brick and mortar and e-commerce channel development. Later with Cartier, she oversaw retail operations and all aspects of retail marketing activities for the Korean market. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand this over here to the one and only Gina O. Oh, you go ahead and take it from here, okay? Thanks Gina, I'll see you guys in the chat. Thank you, Hector. I feel so special. And then, you know, we are, uh, thank welcome everybody, first of all, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are very excited to see many of you and coming all of uh, so many different places. So that's so exciting. Uh, and then we are the most of all, we are very excited to learn more about uh, what you are interested in and have opportunity to be able to tell you about this exciting world of fashion business. Uh, so, you know, and also we have a lot of different programs that is that are offered and helping uh, future professionals to be in very different areas in fashion. So as Hector um, introduced very nicely, my name is Gina O, oh, and I'm the director of fashion merchandising. And then uh, with uh, Andrea here with me, uh, who is a product development program coordinator, uh, we are managing uh, product development and merchandising and fashion marketing and also fashion visual merchandising program within the School of Fashion. 
And uh, we've been thinking about, okay, what would be the most interesting and then most beneficial for you guys to learn about the world of fashion business? So what we decide to do is maybe we will invite our alumni and also graduating senior who is going to share the experience with you guys. So, you know, you will learn actually from uh, the students who have gone through the program and working in the industry right now uh, so that it might be most exciting thing that you can uh, have a conversation with. So we are very excited to have this opportunity. Uh, so when you guys are having a questions during our short presentation about the program and also our alumni and students, Angelica and Alisa is presenting what they're working on, what they learned, feel free to leave any comments or questions towards me and uh, Andrea or any of us. So we are happy to answer all these questions later on or in the middle of the conversation. So Elisa finished the fashion uh, BFA fashion merchandising program uh, a couple of years ago, and then she's currently working at Old Navy. And then Angelica is graduating senior. She's right there, almost there. And then she's finishing her BFA in product development. So uh, we are very excited to have them here. And just before we get it started and then talk about the programs. So I'm sure the first thing when you think about the fashion school or being in fashion industry, probably the first thing that you know comes to your mind is being a designer. So I'm just curious uh, how many of you guys are, were aware of different programs such as fashion merchandising or fashion marketing or product development or visual merchandising that is a part of the uh, big uh, word of fashion. Just put it in the uh, chat box so that just we know uh, how much of you are already aware of these programs or having a interest in pursuing this career. Okay, so you guys heard about the product development, journalism, marketing, not at all. That's great. This is, this is why we are here. <laughs> Merchandising. Wow, you guys are so fast. So I'm trying to catch up with everybody. Journalism, marketing, merchandising, but you are interested in art direction. So I'm assuming that you're pursuing a probably grad program. Yep, that's fine. If you are not aware of any of this, fantastic. Thank you so much. Fashion design, yep. V visual merchandising, there you go. So uh, we will probably just to, you know, before we get it started, let me just share uh, this, start the screen, but uh, let me just start this presentation. But before we actually go uh, ahead and start, let me just give you just, just overview of what, what you can expect to hear from us and also Alisa and Angelica. Angela and I will introduce <clears throat> different programs the School of Fashion has various programs, including all the design program, journalism and styling that you guys mentioned. Uh, but we are going to specifically talk about business related majors today, which includes fashion merchandising, visual merchandising, product development and fashion marketing. Uh, Andrea and I will go over very briefly what kind of career path you expect or what uh, what type of people or what kind of students who are interested in what kind of career path are in these programs and then what kind of jobs uh, they are pursuing afterwards or having those jobs. So we can talk about briefly about uh, these programs. And then we will hear from Alisa who is working at Old Navy right now. She's going to talk about what she's doing, how different roles that she interacts with every day and then how, uh, what kind of things that she learned is applicable to her job today. And also Lisa, uh, Angelica is going to show some of her senior project. And then one of these uh, closed 3D, I don't know if you guys heard about, uh, but it's a 3D visualization program that has been really, really growing the popularity uh, probably uh, over the years, but actually our school has started uh, learning and teaching these programs for five years ago. Uh, so I think, you know, Angelica's demo is going to show you some of the new things that is happening in the world of product development and marketing as well. So no further ado, so let's get it started. And then I will go ahead and introduce uh, very briefly about different programs that we offer. 
Based on what you guys shared in the chat box, I see that you are very familiar with fashion merchandising. This is probably the most representative program that are known for um, the business of fashion. So the merchandising is a really important function of fashion company. You know, fashion companies, you know, even though we are very familiar with the design jobs, but if you think about a company, you know, design is very critical role of the company to make everything work. But if you think about the other roles that makes the product available to the store for you and us, you know, all of us can enjoy and buy and wear them and how to wear them. You know, all this information flows. There are a lot of different roles that is involved in the business. Specifically, merchandising uh, covers planning, analyzing, buying, product sales and operations, and retail marketing and wholesale marketing that are very important part of the any uh, uh, fashion organizations. So any Anything that you see today, uh, probably most of them are students' work. So you can expect these are some of the things you will create and that you will develop when you are in school. So. To make it easier for you to understand, you know, what kind of jobs can I get if I go to this program and learn, right? Merchandising careers, very wide range of the jobs that you can you can pursue, but most most known careers in these programs are buyer. If you are interested in becoming buying product for a specific store or brand, or you want to be a merchandiser, or you're very, very analytic, but you love fashion, then merchandise planner and analyst, those are also a career options. If you love people, if you love to interact with people, retail management and operation is very, very important part of the business e-commerce operation and also product development and also the marketing. So these are some of the roles and jobs that our students and graduates are pursuing and, and working in the industry. So more specifically, the things that you learn in the school, you will learn how to develop product concepts, the merchandising concepts. So in other words, you will learn uh, what kind of product should we make or sell? You know, how do we make and sell? You know, where even in the store, where do we place them, right? So it, the merchandising concept includes a lot of different areas. You have to know the customer, you have to know what is trending, you have to know if the economy is good or bad. So you will know all about this. And then you will learn how to plan and select and also manage the products for specific customers. And then you will also develop sales plan, operation plan, and marketing promotion plans for different type of brands. So these are very key things, you know, a lot of things that you learn, but you know, these are main uh, topics that you learn in various uh, classes in fashion merchandising program. So these are just snapshot of undergrad classes, but if you're interested in grad program, we do have similar um, advanced level of courses, but similar topics that is covered in this program as well. So you learn basics of fashion marketing, you learn buying fundamentals, a lot of numbers, a lot of math, but it will make sense to be able to manage and buy products. You learn how to retail and market globally. You learn how to develop the product. Also, you learn specific merchandising strategy and, and plans for accessories or product, the beauty products. And also you will learn how to create the e-commerce, how to manage and present the product in online. So these are some of the few courses that we teach in this program. So these are, as I said, the students work from various classes. So, you know, the left side, you see the product concept. You also see on this middle, you know, there is a sermon plan, which kind of represent the seasons looks and products that are sold in specific stores that students are planning, how those are going to be merchandised in store. And this is specific for the uh, accessory merchandising, how they are planning to merchandise and present online. These are all students' works. And then these are specific product line development. Students do all of these and then research all different fabric, come up with a trend analysis, and then work on all these elements of the, product, the project. This is the fun part. I was a buyer. That was really my favorite thing. So you don't have to love it, but you know, you, you can do your work because the people like us who love doing the numbers. So 
you see these are the buying plan. The left side, you see the uh, mock presentation. Our students present their uh, product to the buying class. So the buyers from other classes come and actually ex exercise the buying practices as well. So these are all students work from merchandising. Another program that we offer is visual merchandising. This is really a good mix of very uh, creative side as well as analytical side. But you know, visual merchandising is basically um, make it um, make the vision work. You know how either in store or e-commerce environment, how the brand can represent what they are looking, what they are uh, trying to communicate with the customers, but ultimately to be able to sell the product and very successful in their season's collection. Uh, so, you know, in other words, feature merchandise bring the store to life, whether it's online or digital platforms or in store. These are some of the work students did. And then the careers in this field includes visual merchandiser, also can go to the merchandising part of it, product stylist, creative direction. So there are a lot of different options the students can pursue. So specifically, it's very hands-on. So you learn how to use different tools, how to use different materials, and what are different methods to make your creative concept to be a bit, uh, to be materialized in the store setting uh, and then connect and engage customers with various visual and digital tools, plan the space, and then also learn the industry software such as um, the Google SketchUp. And also our students are very closely involved in special project working with the industry partners before pandemic, not during the pandemic, but you know we work with uh, a lot of different local uh, retailers. Also we work with uh, the exhibition of the spring show as well when it was held on ground. Some of the courses in this program, tools and material, creative concept, reclaimed object, everybody who is uh, nowadays interested in how to be sustainable. So it's really interesting topic, space planning and special project class, also graphics for presentation class are some of the highlights of this program. Again, the students work, students actually not only do um, the, the uh, 2D or 3D work, but also they actually create a, a visual presentation and then take the photography to make it to be st stylized in magazines, or maybe it can be used in store, or it can be used in e-commerce environment. So there's a lot of interesting uh, creativity and analytical uh, mindset working in this program. So these are some of the examples of our students work from concept to the window to the store. These are 3D visualization of the st uh, space planning for the retail environment, some mockups using the um, Google SketchUp. So the next is the marketing program. Actually, this is the work of Angelica, <laughs> who is going to share, uh, share some of the 3D, um, the software later in the product development. But this is also a very interesting time for fashion marketers because, it, because of this new digital environment, there's a lot of innovations. So our marketing program um, kind of give you the opportunity to learn about uh, market trend and consumer and then create a program, the marketing program or promotions that are uh, relevant to the customers and the brands. So it is very creative, but at the same time, you can be very analytical. You know, students in this program can go towards more creative direction side or they can go more of the strategy side, depending on what their interests are. So the marketing careers, any marketing uh, positions, market analysts, social media or digital marketers specific to those um, the platform, brand manager, account manager, if you are more interested in working for the creative agencies, public relations or event and promotion planner, creative director. There's a lot of interesting mix of analytical and creative works uh, available in this career path. So a lot of research, a lot of analysis, to be able to become a very creative marketer and then create the ex create to execute a lot of different type of marketing plans for the goals, 
develop the branding, develop creative directions, create the mock-ups for promotion and uh, strategy. This is one of the example from a student, probably, I mean, it's still very relevant, but it was a while back, but she had this idea of creating the mobile store. So literally there's no store, but this mobile truck. So she actually did a mock-up of this, um, this um, truck basically it doesn't really look like a truck but you know she designed this and then she actually did the research about how much it's going to cost to buy this type of truck so it was very fun project that she did but you know after the afterwards we were seeing a lot of companies are doing this type of mobile um, pop-ups using you know different tools and different types of cars so it was very interesting to see how it became uh, alive we do have some courses such as public relations, brand marketing, specific to the creative strategy, global marketing, digital marketing, entrepreneurship is also the big part of this program as well. So these are some of the courses uh, in marketing. Students work, as I said, there's a lot of research and analysis, but not just doing it, but as students actually presented really, really effectively using a lot of visual aids, also using a lot of visual communication tools. So these are all presented by students based on their research analysis. You know, like the, the pop-up, um, the mobile truck, the, this is a whole range of the branding that she created for, uh, for her idea. And then a lot of students work related to the e-commerce, and social media campaign, mobile campaign. These are all the students work from different programs. So I'm going to pass this to Andrea Skillings, who is our program, develop, uh, program coordinator for profession product development. And then she's going to talk about the program, also some of the other courses as well. So Andrea. Great, thank you so much, Gina. Um, so to talk a little bit about product development, um, what's important to think about is that product development is essentially kind of what we call designing for market. So it's a great combination of both uh, creative elements with you know, researching trends, as well as more of these technical components that you would um, incorporate. So a lot of times the question is, I want, or the response is, I wanna be a fashion designer. So product development is very similar um, in that you are designing more so for a specific brand. So if there is a brand that you're interested in and you want to design collections for that brand, product development is a great tool. Um, it allows for you to be creative in the research of trends. Um, you learn a lot about creating technical flat sketches so that you have the ability to communicate your ideas not only visually through presentation, but also with um, more technical aspects that you would use to communicate with a factory so that your products can be produced later on. Um, in the product development program, we spend a lot of time um, kind of preparing you for multiple outlets um, in the business. And this can be a technical designer where you're focusing on kind of how a garment fits on the body and essentially how you're going to adjust patterns to make it fit better. Um, you could be a designer. So essentially researching trends at the beginning of a season and designing collections specifically for that season. Um, a product developer, same thing. You might spend a little more time doing technical packages, um, but essentially you'll be working in systems like uh, PLM, uh, which is a computer software program that's used throughout the industry to create tech packs. Um, you could also work in production um, or as a sourcing specialist because the product development uh, program gives you the tools to be able to actually produce your products to be sold in store at essentially kind of multiple store levels. Um, also, you could be a brand manager. So it's a really... Um, it incorporates a lot of elements um, as you're developing the skills and the product development program kind of allows for you to go through different outlets as you move into your career. So essentially in product development, really what you spend a lot of time on is researching and analyzing different trends so that you can build product assortments for a specific brand. So really we focus in on identifying who that target customer is so that you can um, essentially understand what their expectations are 
So you're designing products that not only um, fit within their price point, within their design expectations, while still meeting the standards of your particular brand. Uh, we spend a lot of time um, utilizing the computer, whether it's through um, using Illustrator to create technical flat sketches. Um, like I said previously, we also use a software program called PLM, uh, which focuses on uh, tech packs. And then we also use Clo 3 d which is a 3D um, sampling virtual software that actually Angelica is gonna show you a little bit more about um, so that you can kind of see a hands-on approach to this software. So this is just, um, again, an overview of some of the classes that you will focus on as you're going through the product development department. Um, essentially, we spend a lot of time on the computer. So you focus on being able to draw using Illustrator. So you have computerized product design. Um, and then you have pre-production, which is your PLM software course. Uh, virtual garment development is your Clo 3D program. Um, and then, of course, we focus a little bit on fashion manufacturing so that you can understand um, kind of what a factory looks for, looks for when they're um, working on your creating your garments or manufacturing your garments. Um, and then advanced line development, where you have the opportunity to create a product assortment um, for a brand that you select for the entire year as well as sourcing, um, fabrication, sourcing and production so that you can understand where and how to find those raw materials that are required as you build your assortment. So then here we have examples of student work um, so that you can kind of get a sense of some of the coursework you'll be doing throughout the program. Um, the first example here is in a PLM software program, um, and it will kind of show you essentially uh, the essentials of the technical flat sketch, identifying components of how the garment is made. And then to the right here, we have um, a sourcing element where the students are responsible for sourcing at different trade shows so that they can communicate and hopefully find the right raw material suppliers and garment manufacturers for their product. Um, additionally, like I mentioned before, a lot of time is spent on trend research, establishing color palettes, selecting the appropriate materials for a season, so that you can design the appropriate uh, collection for your brand, your customer, and that season. So here you'll see um, a student work with her concept board to the right-hand side, an overview of the color and materials, and then how she translated that into her product assortment. Then we do a lot of um, line details. So being able to not only design the line, but be able to merchandise the collection so that you make sure that you're presenting to your team a good assortment of colors as well as styles for your collection. So here is a set of line sheets so that the collection can be presented either to the team or to outside potential buyers to purchase. Also here is an example from Clo 3 d So again, Clo 3 d is a 3D software that really allows for brands to kind of shorten the process with fits by having kind of the actual look of the, of the garment through the software. So then just to give you a sense of what are some of our um, first year classes so that you can think about some of the things you'll start doing. So um, we spend a lot of time on the computer, as I mentioned. So you'll spend a, a time working through digital techniques. The goal of this course is to give you a broad overview of software programs like InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop so that you can present uh, your work visually. Also, you have visual communication tools for fashion. Essentially, this is a way for um, business students to be able to translate their ideas visually by using different elements that will kind of allow for them to explore composition. Then we have uh, our introduction, oh, sorry, color theory and fab uh, fabric technology. So essentially, this course is intended to uh, introduce you to elements of fiber, fabric, and color so that you can incorporate these elements as you begin to design collections. 
Then lastly, we have um, introduction to product development, which gives you a kind of broad overview of the product development process so that you can begin by being inspired by outside elements and then researching trends um, and understanding about the target customer so that you can design your first assortment. And then also you have an uh, introduction to fashion business. Essentially, this course will give you an overview of the roles and responsibilities in the um, fashion business industry so that you can start thinking about merchandising um, and then the different markets for retail and wholesale. Then we have also throughout the university, we have other uh, industry experiences that happen. Um, that really give the students the opportunity to network. So like we talked about before, Spring Show is a great opportunity for students to display their work at the end of, you know, as they're graduating. Um, there's also various industry visits in the classroom so that you can engage and talk to um, kind of businesses directly. Um, we also have the YMA scholarship, which is a scholarship that is sponsored and it allows for students to prepare a case study based on sometimes merchandising, design, and supply chain. Then we also do um, trade show visits, so they can be local here in San Francisco, or they can be um, outside of San Francisco, think places like Magic or uh, Cala, et cetera. And then here are some of the companies that our graduates work at, so that you can get a sense of, you know, kind of people in all of these majors are uh, kind of working at the, all of these different locations. So Forever 21, Pop Sugar, Patagonia, et cetera. Um, here, this is just um, our information. So Fashion Business has an Instagram account. So um, Academy U Fashion Business. And then you have uh, my contact information as well as Gina's contact information. So if you have questions about the program specifically, you can reach out to us and we can give you some additional information. Next, I think, so next we'll go ahead and uh, introduce Alisa. Hi. So we, Gina, if you could just stop sharing your screen. I can't stop. Okay, so there you go. I oh, there. <laughs> okay, first I, I couldn't find the. I mean, it didn't really move, so I could. I was. I was muted, and then I couldn't say anything. There you go. So here you go. <laughs> So next, we're going. To, I'm going to uh, introduce Alisa. Um, she is going to talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, graduating from the program and then incorporating the skills that she learned at her role at Old Navy. So, Alisa, you can go ahead and take it away. Oh, thank you, Andrea. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm very excited to be here to talk about my experience at AAU. To just give you a brief intro about myself, my name is Alisa and I'm a graduate of 2017 class with BFA in fashion merchandising, and I'm currently working at Old Navy as a product development system manager. As you have already heard from the presentation, the school offers solid fashion business programs with many opportunities for students to participate in scholarships and networking platforms. And I have to say, I am one of many beneficiaries from the programs and scholarship events where I had received YMA $5,000 scholarship. And I'm confident to say that the classes teach you the skills and knowledges that you can apply at real workplaces right away as all professors are industry members. And I was offered my first internship position during my merchandising class in my junior year. And that's how I began building my career. While I was at school, I collaborated, collaborated with different majors like photography, design, and journalism, et cetera, for school assignments, which has taught me how to flex my communication styles when working with different functions. So the faculty at AU is great at recognizing passionate students and helps them to excel in their career and goals. 
And I have no doubt for anyone who is considering to join AAU community it would receive the same care. Um, just to give you a snapshot of my YMA scholarship project, this was actually in class project, which I've developed further to meet the criteria and format expectation for the scholarship submission. And it was one of many projects that I did during classes. So coming up with the ideas and researching, doing SWOT analysis came through pretty naturally. The case study was to identify what product line would make the collaboration between Macy's and Etsy the most successful for all stakeholders involved. So my idea was to establish a customized jewelry DIY bar in Macy's to reposition their jewelry market presence and help Etsy vendors to expose handcrafted products to the existing and potential target markets. So as you can see on the left side, the SWOT analysis and the online marketing strategies over here, six months by planning the math part right here. <laughs> and here on the left, on the right side, you can see a picture taken at the Gala Dinner in New York with Gina on the right. <laughs> and right after YMA scholarship, I was able to um, apply for a nourishment internship where I had an opportunity to hear about it as a get from a guest speaker in my merchandising class. And I reached out to the guest speaker and I wanted to be considered for the position and I got the position. And during the internship, the interns were given a capstone project uh, where we have to identify an opportunity in Nordstrom online presence. So our team basically saw that Nordstrom online presence and customer service wasn't really on the same level. It was during 2018 and during what was offered in the store. So in order to have a seamless experience for both online and store, our team pets the um, online virtual stylist that could help the customer to navigate them to the right products, make the right suggestions, and offer more personal, personalized shopping experience. So right after internship, I like it was in the middle of the internship, I got promoted to be assistant department manager right like about a month in. So it was a pretty quick promotion from my internship to a full-time position. So as you can see on the screen, this was the 2018 Nordstrom current approach on the online. What we pitched was to have a stylist online like 24 seven so that when customers are shopping on their on, on the website, they could actually get the suggestion right away and get the get their answers um right I get the get their uh, questions answered right away. So our team won the um this proposer and this was actually the pitching that was actually delivered to our HQ and later this was what was translated in 2019 with their actual virtual stylist on suggestion on the bottom. It was pretty cool to see this. So key, co key, key courses that I recommend, which I thought was pretty useful or like helped me to actually set the ground, good foundation for me to start working was uh, some of the courses was like trend analysis and manufacturing and buying fundamentals where I learned how to like to um, project healthier margins, ROI, markups and stuff. And also designing career will help you to prepare all the necessary documents and stuff like that for before applying for the jobs too. So like getting all your resumes and cover letters prepared and how to actually start a conversation when you're in the interview process too. So as Gina and Andrea um, introduced, I work at Old Navy. Those of who may not be too familiar with Old Navy company, it is a global apparel and accessory brand that makes current American essential, uh, essential accessible to every family. And it started in 1994 and it's a part of Get Inc company. And it was also recognized a, a good, healthy company workplace in 2019 too. And here are some of the jobs that you could actually apply um, within Old Navy. It was like design, merchandising, product development, and marketing. And a lot of 
AAU graduates join this this um this functions and under this function there are a lot of different um job sectors too like under design there'll be texture design cat designer and a pro designer and so on um so my team PDs are putting a lot of energy in creating sustainable products and ex adding extended sizing for existing styles to offer inclusive products. So Old Navy announced the elimination of plastic shopping bags in the US and Canada stores by 2023, alongside other plastic reduction commitments aimed to create greener and cleaner future for the next generation. So me, my team, and my cross-functional PD counterparts are working with the vendors and international sourcing office to switch out our packaging to 50% recycled contents, which is increased from uh, our current, which is 35, starting this summer. And we are still working in progress of negotiating costs for healthier margins for the extended sizing clothing. Oh, oops. So those of you who are interested in working as a product development managers, uh, you get to witness the whole product development life cycle from ideation to final products to the consumers. So you get to work with a lot of uh, cross-functional teams like design, fabric research and development, merchandising, inventory manager, leverage market buyers, marketing, internet sourcing offices, and on so on. And from an ideation stage, uh, PDs will identify and align on key fabrics and yarns for each season in partnership with the design and fabric research and development. Right after ideation stage, we go into development week, development week when PDs partner with the international sourcing office on sourcing strategies and costing negotiations. And after development week, we go into adoption stage when where we uh, we resolve potential costing and manufacturing issues prior to development of a style to ensure quality execution in bulk. And on the top of all this response, the PD is also responsible in auditing monthly in store quality assessment of department products. So we visit stores monthly basis to check all the products that's in good quality or not, and just to check. Um, currently, Right now, we are uh, working on spring 22 seasons and which you will get to see next year. And there are a lot of pretty exciting things coming up too. So stay tuned. Um, some of the work that I, uh, my team and my cross functioners worked on last year, which came out this season was the family matching pride. Um, Old Navy is, is a destination for outfitting the whole family. So during Pride Week, people, like customers, were able to find the Pride-themed clothing for from men's, women's to the toddlers. As you can see, the pants over here, little toddlers, like rompers in here too. And another uh, project I'm excited to share, which I worked on, was the gender-neutral clothing. It's where a lot of um, different di divisions, we align on same colors and prints across like women's, men's division. And it's so perfect for any person to wear regardless of their gender with which you may identify. So it was a pretty fun uh, project that worked on at Old Navy. And that's it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Elisa. Um, next, we're going to have uh, Angelica, who is going to talk to you a little bit about her senior project um, and how she incorporated some of the skills that she learned throughout the product development program, but also incorporating CLO 3D. Angelica? Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored to be here today. Um, I am gonna talk a little bit about product development, why I chose it and what I'm doing now, what I've learned from it. So um, why I chose product development, um, because I've always had the dreams and the goals to run my own business and to have my own fashion brand. Um, and that's why I joined PD because not only do you still get to be in the creative aspect and the design, but you also have the technical side, the computer skills, the business skills, 
which is what I was really looking for. Um, and that's why I love product development so much because I'm able to still be a designer and be creative and make something that I'm proud of, but on a larger scale and mass production. Um, so that's really why I chose product development. And I think that the, the courses did a great job of preparing me for that um, and getting me the necessary tools and skills that I needed to know in order to run and start my own business. So um, one of the th main things that I want to include in my business is getting into the Clothe 3D and the digital side of it. So I'm just going to share my final project that I did in my final um, product development class, was, which was advanced, advanced sketch and line development. So here is my final project. Oh, wait. The is in the way. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So this was my final project. Um, so of course, like what I love about product development is the key thing to me about product development is that you get to kind of control and make sure that everything comes out exactly how you want it to be um, and how you want your product to look in the end. So you get to start by doing your research. So here's my mood board. I did research on um, just the different trends going on. You get to discover what you think will be in the future. So trend forecasting, different colors, different fabrics, everything. So for this final project, I had to choose a brand that I wanted to design two collections for. So I chose Moschino. And my idea, my concept for the project was to do physical and digital realities combining. Um, so that's why I used Clothe 3D um, as part of this project, because the main idea was to have physical garments that Moschino would sell, but also having a digital version that people could use on their avatars for video games. So this was my mood board. And then you just go into doing your research on the different fabrics. So prior, I have done a bunch of sketches on just different designs and what I was looking for for this collection and based off of what Moschino would sell. So I looked and did research on the fabrics that they've used previously, the styles that they've had. I did some print research because I really wanted to show the merging like realities of physical and digital. I wanted there to be blurring lines and different things happening. So these are the prints that I've kind of, I've found and created and made my own. And then here, this is a line sheet. So it shows all of the research that I did and why I have these garments. So as you can see, I have like the description here, the type of fabric I used, the fabric content. And these are things that you'll learn in your classes to be able to understand why, because you have to know why you have to be able to say, why you chose the specific fabric, why this content, because it's all really important and doing research on the pricing, the colors, the prints, everything. So these are just like the final styles that I decided to have in this collection that I would be selling um, both physically and digitally for Moschino. And these are the final looks for the first collection. This was for autumn winter. So these are all my key looks. And these are the, these are actually the digital avatars that I um, used from the Clothe 3D software. So this was my second um, collection for Moschino. I wanted to do, it's the same concept for digital and physical realities, but just with a little twist, I wanted it to be more feminine and, um, just showing like physical things could be brought into the digital world. I did trend research and figuring out the silhouettes I wanted to show, the styles, the fabrics, the trims, everything. Um, 
you just go into a lot of detail. And that's why I really love product development because you get to see, um, oversee every single detail that goes into these garments and why you want it that way. So it just gives so much creative expression and creative freedom. So these are the fabrics that I chose um, for my final styles. These are the prints. Again, I wanted to show um, the blurring lines and just, but added that more feminine touch with the pinks and the light blues and everything. And typically um, for this final project, like my other, my peers, my classmates, they did the technical flat sketches that Andrea showed before, but I did it in close 3D because I really wanted to show that my idea is for the digital world as well. So that's why I showcased with Close 3D digital garments. And these are the final styles that I, I designed and I made all of these in Close 3D myself. Um, so yeah, and then these are the final looks right here. So now I'm gonna show you, I put on a little fashion show for you guys just to show you what you could do with Clo 3D. Clo 3D is, that was my favorite class, my favorite program. Um, I've included it a lot in my own projects and I really hope to use it in my future. In my brand that I'm actually working on right now, I've already begun to use it. So I'm just gonna share my um, video and just for, a little disclaimer, there's a little bit of um, avatar nudity for any of you who are, they wanted me to mention that. But I mean, the body is art. We take drawing classes and we look at it as art. So yeah, this is just what I created. So here in Close 3D, we have the 2D panel and the 3D panel. In the 3D panel, I've placed the 2D patterns around her body and I'm sewing them together to make sure that the garment fits exactly how I want it to. I'm adjusting the garment and making sure that everything sits properly and then giving her a little pause so if I want to take a picture later to put on my new board or anything, I'll have that as well. Next, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when we put it together in a fashion show. So here we go. <laughs> so that was the little um did you guys hear it okay okay so um i edited that in the um, just iMovie on my laptop but that is just what you can use. And honestly, Clo 3D, um, I love it because it really speeds up the process and it makes things more sustainable um, because you get to see the precise measurements. There's so many things you can do in Clo 3D. You get to see the precise measurements of your garment. It really cuts down time. It cuts down um, garment, like product waste. It cuts down a lot of things. and that's why a lot of manufacturers and um, brands, businesses, companies, they're all switching to using Flow 3D. So it's definitely a class that I recommend. Um, right now, I'm starting my own brand with one of my friends. We're doing a luxury men's clothing brand and we're actually launching in a couple months. And because I know Flow 3D, because I was able to make my own tech packs and do all of the work for how I want my garments specifically to be made. It actually sped the process up and we got to launch sooner than we thought and the garments came out exactly how we wanted because I really believe Clo 3D helped us a lot. And in the future, I have this dream of doing my own digital fashion brand. Um, just to give you guys a little glimpse of what I think the future of fashion is going to look like, I imagine it, I've done research just on like 
people starting to wear digital clothes. Actually, if you do the research now, you can see it's a thing that's starting to become more and more popular. Um, if you think about it, like, you know, kind of like Snapchat when you put filters on your face or the Instagram filters, except it's a filter for your body. Um, and I, it just gets me so excited. And that's why I'm super passionate about Clothe 3D and digital garments, because unlike, you know, in the real world, of course you can make clothing, um, but it has to be able to go on the person. It has to be able to come on and off. So there's a little bit of limitation, but when it comes to Clothe 3D and the digital universe, the metaverse is what people say, there's no limitations. You can be as creative as you want, as expressive as you want, you can do. I think the only thing that could limit you is your own mind. So you just have to be creative and you have to just put yourself out there. Um, so I'm super excited for the future of fashion. I'm super excited to be starting my own brands and product development really set me up to be able to do these things. And also it just looks great on your portfolio. Um, just to be able to show that you've learned all of these things. Because I do know people who've done product development and they took the product development classes and majors and they were still hired on as designers because they knew you know, the creative side, but they also knew the technical side, which I think just opens up a little bit more job opportunities. So that's why I chose product development and the classes were great, the teachers were great. Um, and I really enjoyed my time here at AAU. So thank you guys for letting me speak. And I think we're getting into questions now, correct? Thank you, Angelica. Oh, wow. I would love to add though, right? I mean, Angelica shows her outcomes in Clothe 3D. I know she's really passionate and she kind of um, elevated it, but also Angelica did everything from 2D sketching, yeah. right you did everything by hand first and then the exact same looks in computer like typical adobe software and also in clothe 3d and then you were able to do it very successfully because you um you you learn all those uh, fundamentals and then you really utilize it so i really want to um tell everybody angelica is not only good at <laughs> clothe 3d but she's she also understands the construction also know how to draw and you know all those things so I definitely, I took some pattern classes and just the basic computer classes and all of the basic classes really led up to everything that I showed you in my final project. That's almost everything that I've learned just throughout being here the past four years. So definitely um, the Clo 3D is just my favorite part, <laughs> but without other courses, um, I wouldn't have been able to get to what I've made and learned today. So, yeah. So I think, you know, we, we hopefully we gave you some ideas of different programs that we offer and then how these programs and the, the functions work together in the big corporations like Old Navy and Lisa is working at or the new companies uh, the Angelica is planning to start. So, I mean, we're going to open it up to you guys to ask any questions to any of us. So we are here for you to answer any questions. So please, please feel free to write on the chat box. So is Clothe 3D an app? And is it self-explanatory to learn? Can I use YouTube tutorials. There are a lot of uh, YouTube tutorials, but what's important, the, the things that you guys saw is because as I said, Angelica understand construction, she understand the design, right? So she was able to make it very successful in 3D environment. Uh, it's difficult to do it without not having the, the knowledge and construction. Wouldn't you say Andrea and Angelica? Yeah. Yes, I think um, to just, I mean, and I think just following the tutorial, any tutorial that's out there, um, you need not only a background, but also kind of an understanding step by step, because there are lots of tools and lots of functions that you can incorporate to be able to execute it as Angelica did. Yeah, and I would say that if you've 
never taken, you know, pattern classes and you don't understand the basic sewing, like skills and um, basic pattern making skills, learning Clo 3D would be a lot more difficult. I know that some um, fashion students who have taken the Clo 3D class, they do, they learn a lot faster because they're, they know more about pattern making and sewing. Um, and yeah, like you can learn um, some basic stuff through YouTube, but because it's so new, um, I wouldn't say that you, you'd be able to learn everything, but I definitely encourage you. It's, um, it's a software that you can get online if you just go on the Clo 3D website. Um, you do have to pay for it month by month. I think there's a free trial for the first month. Students do get a discount, but when you're part of AAU and you have the class, obviously that is included with the class, I'm pretty sure. But I would say definitely having that other, um, those other skill sets and just having a teacher there working with you and teaching you step-by-step step how to do everything, um, I would recommend that. I think we have some related questions. I mean, we have a lot of questions, which is fantastic, but you know, there are a few related questions um, to the Clo 3 d You cannot just go and uh, go ahead and then take, the, in terms of the curriculum wise, right? In the program, the Clo 3 d is pretty, um, it is in place of uh, around the junior and then senior, all the senior area, because we know that you have to understand construction to be able to not just draw, you know, you can draw all the beautiful things, but if you don't know how this piece, if you remember from Angelica's example, it, you know, on the right side, there was a pieces, all these different pattern pieces that you need to create, which requires understanding of clothes, construction, design, and all of these components. So if you do not have those understanding, you know, it will be difficult to actually execute your ideas in Clo3D environment. So, you know, that is that's, that, that was the reason why we have this class in junior and early senior level in the program. So you guys can learn all these different things and to be able to utilize the Clo3D uh, very, very effectively. And then even in the companies who uses Clo3D is the end of the, the cycle of the development. They all start sketching, designing, making the uh, digital design, which means the 2D design, and then, you know, then use the Clo3D. So, you know, it is not like you can just jump in and then start the Clo3D without ignoring all these other parts of this process. So it is kind of very complementary and very interesting. And also it is very um, um, interesting for marketing purposes. Well, you guys saw this digital uh, fashion show, then a lot of companies has done digital shows using this type of tools over uh, during the pandemic, which made fashion alive. So in marketing and merchandising, these tools are used in a very interesting ways. So, yep. And then there was a question about probably towards Angelica or Alisa, what is the one piece of education you wish you had that you did not study? I think you guys can answer better. <laughs> can you repeat the question, please? What was that? From Danielle, she's asking, what is the one, one piece of your education you wish you had that you did not study? Like as far as in fashion, you think? It's not clear, but you know, it could be anything, I guess. I mean, throughout your uh, college experience, I guess. Yeah, any- said yes with it, yeah. Um, I guess for me, I, I just never had an experience of CLO classes. <laughs> so I guess that's one thing that I won't wish I had taken or like wish I had those classes when I was at AAU. You d when you were in the school like four years ago, five years yeah. ago, this program. I don't think. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think so, it exists yeah. either. Yeah, so it's like, pretty exciting to see like you guys have all this interesting tools and classes are offering. So, yep. Um, I'm not sure. I <laughs> I feel like um, 
I think if I would want to take any more classes, like now that I'm done with school, I would like to, I would like to take more like actual sewing classes and um, pattern making classes because I did get what I want um, through product development, which was this, the technical skills and the computer skills, the business and manufacturing and marketing, like you learn all of that in PD. Um, but I would, I think I would take some extra like sewing classes because I do still want to make physical garments as well. So yeah, or I also, I would love to take like a shoe design class <laughs> or a jewelry class, like that would be a handbag class, like that would just be mm -hmm. really me. And also I saw some people were asking to connect with me. So um, I don't know if it's all right, if I could, I could put my email or my Instagram and if you guys want to reach out to me, you can. Totally okay. It's all, it's just your call. <laughs> okay, I, I'm gonna put it below for anybody who'd like to reach out to me. And there's somebody, um, Laura, uh, Lionel Lee uh, asked about the what is experience like online, the fashion made, uh, merchandising major online. You know, we do have full programs that uh, the curriculums are same uh, between online and uh, on campus in merchandising. You probably see, you know, the online program is very rigorous in a way that, you know, that you have to manage the time of your own, you know, it's not like you have three hours dedicated time that you're going to spend time with your instructor on campus versus you have to manage your time uh, um, yourself. So it is pretty challenging, but in terms of your experience or learning experience or topics that you learned, the works that is expected, you know, we, our standards are the same the quality of the program and courses are the same. Many of our instructors, probably most of them, um, except a few who are in different countries, you know, most of the instructor who teaches on campus also teaches online classes. So your experience between online and on campus is very hybrid, you know, it's very interchangeable. Um, but merchandising, uh, you have to, you know, do your work and then there's a lot of communication in written forms, but also we do offer live meetings weekly or bi-weekly depending on the class. So you will have chance to actually speak with the instructor even if you are fully online. So, you know, the merchandising program online, there's not much of difference uh, between online and on-site or on campus, uh, but it will be a lot of reading, a lot of writing. I mean, not just reading the books, but you're reading a lot of news, you know, what's happening with this brand, you know, what's happening with the consumers, what is happening in the market, you know, what's happening with this shipping, you know, so there's a lot of, uh, you have to be very curious whether you're on-site or on campus. We have a lot of students uh, for different reasons pursuing the degree online, you know, they might be working or they have a family or they cannot uh, come to San Francisco campus, but, you know, we have a lot of great, um, um, the alumni who finished the program hybrid or 100% online. So, you know, um, happy to explain more, but I'm sure the Hector also can provide a lot more information. So that was one question. Uh, and also, did I miss? Anything? There was a question um, that Hector sort of that addressed a bit. Um, but I also wanted to comment that if you're not able to draw, that's okay. Um, we do offer drawing classes that uh, show you how to not only draw um, figure drawing as Angelica was talking about earlier, but we also draw uh, work to draw technical flat sketches of garments. Um, so, you know, that just because you don't have a drawing background doesn't mean that you don't get the opportunity to learn the skills to draw. Let's see, did we miss anything? And I think uh, Ethan asked about couture designers. So, uh, you know, couture design, probably that's more of the design program because our design program is, um, you know, pushing for creativity, you know, some, coming up with your own creative ideas, uh, not necessarily, um, you know, a little bit different from PD, which, you know, we, uh, you learn a lot of technical skills and manufacturing and all those things. So if you're interested in couture design, probably the design program is the best fit. So 
but you will learn, you know, also we do have costume design, which is different from any other design programs as well. So, you know, as I answered some of the questions before, but if you're interested in design or product development, the first semester course or first year classes are very similar. So you're taking uh, classes that are shared by multiple programs in the first semester or two. So if you're merchandising or marketing um, or styling, in, if you have those interests, some of the classes that you take, majority of the classes in the first year are uh, you know, also applicable for multiple majors. So you guys will learn uh, about each different programs while in the school in the first, uh, first semester and then kind of figure out and, and see what other people are doing in the specific majors. You will have opportunity to be able to see and learn. So I think that is another way that, you know, I know some of you guys are interested in many different fields of fashion which is great, you know, but you will never know until you actually try, right? We have a lot of students who wants to be a buyer, who loves being a merchandiser and then coming to the program and then they learn that, oh, these are not what I expected. Or, you know, in any of the programs, they thought that they would want to be a designer, but then they learned that marketing is interesting. So, you know, there's a lot of people who is figuring out what their uh, true interests are. So, you know, that is completely okay to have a lot of different interests as well. So, and I think we do offer limited on-campus class in fall sem in coming fall semester. So if you guys are undergrad um, freshmen or to be freshmen, you know, there are quite a number of classes that you can take on campus. Um, but also we are running online and virtual classes in the fall semester. So you can talk to the um, advisors or you can find those lists of the uh, classes that are available on campus, face-to-face uh, -face, and also virtual or online in our website. So that's probably a tip there. Okay. Um, I was gonna say, I saw a question earlier asking like if we did a lot of work outside of classes, so um, just to answer that question, um, when just my own personal advice, because I know that a lot of people come into art school and they think that it's art school and they think that it's not going to be that much work. That's not necessarily true. Um, but if you're passionate about what you want to do, it's, it's not going to feel like work necessarily. And um, me personally, when I went into my classes, I always put in a hundred percent and I always did a little bit extra. <laughs> um, I tried to do more than what the teachers asked just based on my own standards. Cause I just set really high standards for myself, but also because I thought about it, like every single project that you do from the beginning to the end is all majority can go into your portfolio. So I try to make sure that every project I do, I put in 110% because later on when I look at it and I wanna put it in my portfolio to show to people, to get potential internships and jobs, um, it'll just be a lot easier and you would feel a lot less stressful um, just to put in that work. Um, so outside of classes, yeah, you do have a lot of extra work, um, but I guarantee you it's all worth it. And also when you do do good work, you make great relationships with your teachers. So my advice is don't be, a, don't be afraid to ask your teachers questions. Don't be afraid if you mess up or if you feel like you're not good enough or your work isn't that great like you as long as you put the work in you can do anything that you set your mind to and your teachers are there to help you and kind of you know lift you up and answer your questions and make sure you know that's why they're there so that's my biggest advice is going into school just really put in 110 percent effort into every single project and make sure you put your own twist on it. Do, do what you love, add your own creativity and um, 
design it like you're designing for your favorite brand or for yourself and it'll all come together and you'll be really proud of yourself at the end of it. Lisa, do you have any advice or any idea? Oh, about how yeah, the, yeah, just to, pick it, outside the yeah. <laughs> just to piggyback on Angelica's answer. Um, yeah, I'll just say, um, set up a regular touch base with your instructors. I guess that's make, like establishing a great relationship with the professors or your peers. It's the networking is going to get you where uh, you want to go. So I think that will be my like advice to people who are interested in it. Yeah, great advices. And then we do have a question about if, if uh, Lauren asked if she wants to be working on events and promoting in fashion, you know, marketing would be a great program. Yes, it is. And also you can uh, look at the styling program as well as journalism program, because, you know, those are the jobs that you interact with. Th th those are the people that you interact with in promotion and marketing. So it will be more your interest, you know, whether you want to be coming from the styling background or writing, you know, you want to write about the events, or if you want to actually plan and execute those promotions for fashion products, you know, then marketing pro um, product, the program is great. So, you know, but those are always working together, you know, so I think it's a related program. So you can take a look at different programs as well. So, um, and then, oh, we have more questions. Uh, unfortunately, we do have in merchandising program about Danielle's question, a makeup product line. We do have a beauty merchandising course because beauty and accessory merchandising is different from either home or fashion products. But we do not have a specific class that is uh, addressing the product development for beauty products. But we, if, uh, we do have students who were doing the thesis project in the graduate program who was launching a beauty brand and then work going through the um, development process of her home, uh, applying what she learned into the thesis project. But in terms of the undergraduate program or classes, we do not have specific product development for makeup products, but we do have a beauty merchandising class in merchandising program. Okay. Uh, is there any other questions that we have missed? And there are some questions about the transfer courses uh, and then the limit for online classes. I think the transfer courses, yeah, you, uh, we have students who are transferring uh, from different colleges, but I think you need to check uh, what are the courses that can be transferable between the colleges? Also, you know, there are limits of num number of courses that you can transfer for liberal arts as well as a major. So I think that definitely you need to talk to uh, Hector or his team who will help you figure this out uh, if you are interested in learning more about this transfer credits. And then limits for online classes. I can say that, you know, our full-time students usually takes four classes, right? As an undergrad students, usually they take four classes, whether on campus or online as a full-time student. Okay. Um, I'm not necessarily sure you can do a major and a minor here at AAU because there was a few different majors that I was thinking about before joining Academy of Art. I wanted to, surprisingly, I wanted to do photography. I wanted to do animation and I wanted to do fashion. Like those were the three things. Cause I, I've always loved all different forms of art and I could just see myself doing all those different things. So I really didn't decide on fashion until I came to AAU and I did the um, like the tour. So I toured the photography um, buildings and I toured the um, animation buildings. And 
the last buildings I toured were the fashion. And when I toured the fashion, that's kind of what spoke to me. Um, but you do get to meet so many different people, especially if you're on campus, you get to meet so many different people from all over the world, all over the country, different majors, and you get to make friends with them and learn so much from each other and help each other and network and collaborate. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think we're doing tours because of COVID. I'm not sure, but definitely whatever speaks to you, whatever you feel like is something that you're passionate about. That's my advice is to go for that major. I'm glad I chose the one I did. Yeah, I think that David also mentioned the electives, you know, under, undergraduate programs has three free electives. So that's a way that you can explore different areas of studies or uh, you can take some classes that you're interested in personally or professionally that are not in your program. So that is always an option. Uh, but if you want to pursue a major, probably that is something that you really need to think about because it's going to be a long, uh, you know, the four year program and then you know, that uh, changing the major is not that difficult, but you don't want to change uh, too often or too late because, you know, not everything is going to be transferable. And then you probably want to figure out what's next step for your career from the education to the real career. So yeah, the ele electives are great options for you to figure out or take some classes that you're interested in. Did we miss any questions, Hector or Andrea? I think we... we I think we've been pretty good at getting to them. I mean, generally, we never get all of them or we'll be here super late. But, um, hey, I do want to add a little bit more to that. So, um, you know, I tell students part of the process is I, I have my team meet with students to try to understand their situation, what's going on with them, what they're looking for. So for David, like for your example and a lot of your questions, if you're interested in a lot of different things and elements, what we try to do is kind of like how Angelica was was discussing it, which is like, let's try to narrow it down for you because we want to make sure that you're in the right fit. You're feeling like, okay, this is what I'm going to be passionate about because um, the one thing I try to warn students about all the time, and it's not a bad thing, but this school is so much harder than you think it's going to be. Uh, it's much more challenging. And I think it was Angelica that was saying like, don't think of it as an art school because you're going to think you're going to come in here and paint and color and it's going to be fun. You're going to go to work. Like it's going to be trying to make you a professional. And I always tell students this when I travel and I meet them in different states and things like that, you have to be good enough at this for somebody to want to pay you for your services. And just like Angelica was saying, I literally give this almost exact same lecture all the time. Um, if you're cheating on your projects, you're only cheating yourself. Like, you have to walk around every day with a portfolio that's like, this is how good I am at what I want to do one day. This is how passionate I am. This is how, Mike, how much effort I put into the things that I care about. And so you're only shortchanging yourself. So what I notice is the students that are really successful, they, they manage their time well, but they're not, they're not watching the clock. Uh, when I grew up as a kid, my mom used to always tell me, if you get straight A's, I'll buy you a Nintendo. And the goal was to just get that grade. When it comes to your portfolio, you have to change your mindset to say, I'm going to do the best I possibly can every time because there really is no ceiling to how good you can be if you're always pushing yourself. And I think that when you're in a creative industry, I would just tell you, go in here taking it seriously like you're trying to start your career the day you start school and you'll be on the right track to work hard and to make like wonderful pieces and the cool thing is you would want to go to a school like this because you want to be creative. Uh, we don't want everybody making the same thing. We want people to come back with different ideas, different levels of creativity, uh, different inspiration that's brought into their work. And that's what makes this such a cool industry because you can do anything. You just have to work hard and get good at it. So uh, the last question that somebody had said was about the major minor thing. I just want to address that because um, the reason that we don't do that is just like what I was talking about. If you're taking four classes on your major, I promise you, nobody will ever say, I need more classes. You'll be like, I have my hands completely full. I'm working my hardest on these projects. It just doesn't work that way here. Uh, you honestly are super hard pressed to find anybody that's taking full-time classes 
working their hardest on projects and feel like they have all this free time to do other classes. So the balance is do your classes. That's going to fill you up with a lot of time. Work on your portfolio, network with other people, collaborate. You probably don't have time for additional classes when all of that is going on in your in your educational career. So, um, but like I like Gina was saying, when it comes to the elective slots, I always tell students when they're coming in brand new, choose those wisely. Don't don't choose those elective courses early. Get a little bit more experience in what you're studying to figure out what is it that's going to support my portfolio the best. And it was uh, Alyssa that was saying, man, I really wish that course existed when I was in school. So I would just tell you, choose wisely. Uh, if you really want to take a class for fun, that's cool. But you just have to look at it and say, is this really going to give me the additional skills that I'm looking for to add to my portfolio or to make my education and portfolio even more unique and stand out in the industry I'm trying to get into? So that's enough out of me with the lecture. I just wanted to give you guys my two cents. I've, I've been doing this for like 15 years now, and I've seen a lot of students come from a lot of places. But the one thing in common that I see with the people that really go the distance is they work hard and they try their hardest every day and they're not afraid to fail. So uh, I'm going to throw my email in there one more time. Uh, and I think I dropped the comma, not a period in my email. Sorry about that. Um, but yes, I, uh, I'll save the, the Remember the Titans talk for later, guys. But if you do want to talk to me later, and you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one to learn more about the school, your options. There was a ton of questions about financial aid. I can tell you, I'll vouch, I'm a pretty much a wizard with the financial aid stuff. If I can at least give you advice on how that works, it's more than worth my time. Uh, but just happy to help. So please don't be shy to reach out if I can help with anything. Uh, back to the team here. Yeah, so I also want to add that if you guys are interested, and Angelica already shared her Instagram and contact information, but if you guys want to reach out to us, me and Andrea, and have any questions about the program, Hector and his team is amazing to go through the process, and then any additional information such as the financial aid and things like that. But if you guys are interested in program and classes, you know, you guys always uh, ask Hector to connect you guys with us. We are happy to to uh, speak with you guys uh, individually as well. So feel free to reach out. Yeah, we're super excited that all of you guys are still staying here after an hour and a half. So thank you very much. And if there is any questions. No, we're good. Oh, there's a couple of last uh, questions. What are your favorite fast and slow fashion brands and why? <laughs> well, obviously, the Gap, right? Yeah, Angelica and Alisa, what are your fast and slow fashion brands your favorites are? Um, I would say, like, my favorite like more high-end brands would be um uh, it's so hard i don't know i love prada a lot i love prada i love um for streetwear there's a there's a few newer ones but like the more known ones like off-white i did a project on off-white i like um for fast fashion I've kind of been getting out of fast fashion just because when you go to fashion school, you're going to learn about sustainability and you're going to learn just how terrible all of those fast fashion brands are <laughs> and how <laughs> our environment. So everyone is about sustainability. Um, that's, that's another great thing about fashion school is you learn so much more about the world and like the fashion industry than you could ever know like without it so fast fashion um i don't know even the ones who say they're they're sustainable i don't really be fully believe them so i like to shop more um i like to shop more like local brands i like to shop i like to go thrifting a lot and just buy a lot of like used clothes and then kind of redo them um, make them my own. I like to dye them. I like to buy, um, 
yeah, just, yeah, I'm not really into the, the fast fashion anymore. I don't anymore. think, <laughs> not that I can be with all my fashion years around me. But um, one of my favorite brands that I have actually done a lot of projects on is All Saints. I love that brand. I have, I have a bunch of different styles and aesthetics. So I, I, I love a lot of different brands. So do you have any favorite slow and fast fashion to wrap this up? <laughs> um, I guess mine would be Valentino. That's been my like my favorite. I've been following their Instagrams and their footsteps um, for fast fashion. I mean, I'm working at a fast fashion company and we're working really hard to be sustainable. We're doing a lot of 3D developments too. So <laughs> for FYI, everybody. So yeah, old well, Navy, let's go. <laughs> Yay. All right. So I think Hector, we are... Uh, we can wrap up now. I think the questions are slowing down. So, um. yeah, I've just been actually, uh, I've been um, just replying back to uh, uh, to people's uh, emails that are coming in right now. So, uh, but hey, listen, so everybody in the chat, do me a big favor. Um, if you want to give a big thank you, a big shout out to the team here tonight, uh, you know, huge, huge thank you uh, to our two alumni here. So uh, Alyssa and Angelica, it was awesome to see your work and to have your opinions and your experiences. I think that's it goes a long way, especially when uh, prospective students are looking at the school. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Andrea, for being here. Thank you, Gina O. Uh, the online ed team for Judy and Francis and uh, all the people behind the scenes and marketing that put this on. Thank you guys for being here tonight, setting that up. Thanks for all the attendees. Thank you very much for coming and then listening to what we shared. Absolutely. Uh, hey, so uh, students, what I'll do is I'll let the team go here so they can have dinner and hang out and do what they need to do. But thank you all so much. Sincerely, it was so good to hang out with you guys. You guys made this hour fly by. It was great to see your work. I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, guys. Um, so uh, and so, hey, uh, can we get Angelica's email before we go? She put it in the thread yeah, bud yeah. a few times here. Let me go and see if I can fish I it out of the tie. Did I only put it to panelists? Oh, I oh, didn't. Yeah. My bad. I didn't put it for and I didn't put it for the audience. My bad. I'll put it right now. Yeah, I felt I see it right here. The Angelica C. And also my Instagram is right here so feel free to reach out to me thank you guys for having hi everybody i know you guys will spend some more time with hector but you know so great to meet you everybody we cannot see you though but have a good night thank you good night good night, Gina. Good night everybody hey for you students that are hanging back really quickly um so obviously our event is going to be over but i'm going to be here to help out with any last minute questions links that you may need pass anything back to you. Um, so I just want to say this one more time. Uh, the first thing that I try to do is just set up times to talk to students and we use Zoom, computer, whatever we need to do to show you the programs in detail. Make sure you're comfortable. If you have questions about, are my credits going to transfer? Maybe you're a first time student. Maybe you're worried about a portfolio, which you don't really need. Uh, I want to be able to explain to you how that works and more importantly, why we do it this way. Um, Last thing I would tell you is most students I, I tend to find are worried about how they're going to pay for college. Part of the process here at the university is once a student applies to the university, we actually have a meeting before we even do that to make sure should you even be applying or not, is this going to be the right school for you? But if we do decide to move forward and you're, you're feeling like this is the school for me, the first thing we do is we assign a financial aid representative to each student individually. And that person's job is to sit down and help them make sure that we look at the FAFSA, we look at different grants, loans, scholarship options. If you're military, we can help you look at all the different chapter benefits. If you're tribal, I mean, you name it. But we go through a comprehensive planning appointment to try to show your options to be a full-time student, three-quarters time, part-time, or whatever makes the most sense for you. And that's really when students start to make their decisions if they're going to commit to coming to this university or not. We want to do everything we can to lay 
everything out for you and show you a plan and all of your options based on your personal financial situation. So I would just urge you guys, I can't say this enough. Um, if you have any interest in looking at the school, um, first thing we'll do is set up an appointment and it'll be about an hour of your time. Um, but I guarantee you it'll be worth it because you're either going to know if this is going to be a good school for you or you're going to know if you want to go in a different direction. But either way, it's always worth the time for me to spend trying to help people out and uh, give them the best advice I can. Uh, I don't claim to be an expert on every single program, every single detail, but I've definitely been doing this for a really long time. And I try to do the best I can to either answer questions, help students, or even get them in touch with some of the experts that can help you. So, uh, but anyway, before we sign off, I just want to throw the email out there, throw the invite out there for all of you. I've had probably 10 people email me so far. So thank you for doing that. I'll do my best to get back to you right when we end this. Uh, anyway, hey, for all, those of you out there, we hope to see you at another event soon. Uh, please feel free to check back with us on events. And I hope everybody stays safe. Has a great night. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Right, you guys. Good night, online ed. Guys, have a good one. Thanks, Hector. Have a good one.